The First Thanksgiving Written by Linda Hayward and illustrated by James Watling Plymouth, England, 1620 A ship is in the harbor taking on passengers. The people going aboard seem too poor and too ordinary to ever be famous, and yet their names are now in history books. Now, almost 400 years later, we still tell their story. These are the people we call the Pilgrims. They are about to set sail to a strange new land called America. They've been warned that Indians may attack them. Even the voyage will be dangerous. There may be pirates or hurricanes. Many a ship has sailed off and never been seen again. The Pilgrims are risking their lives. Why? It started with the king. The king declared that everybody must belong to his religion. The pilgrims wanted their own religion. They tried meeting in secret, but the king sent spies to watch their houses. He sent soldiers to arrest their leaders. Even their neighbors turned against them. So the pilgrims decided to leave England. Now at last, they are on the ship that will take them across the ocean, the Mayflower. Other people have joined them. Everyone hopes for a better life in America. They have given up their houses. They have said goodbye to their friends. They have said goodbye to England, too. The Mayflower is on its way. The ship is crowded. There are 102 passengers in all. Most of them must stay in one stuffy place below the deck. It is cold and damp. There is no water for washing, no toilet. Every day the pilgrims eat the same meal, pickled beef, cheese, and dry, hard bread. Some of the bread is full of worms. Even the water tastes bad. Halfway across the ocean, the Mayflower is hit by terrible storms. Week after week, huge waves crash across the deck. It seems as if the small ship will break in two. But the Mayflower is still afloat after nine long weeks at sea. One morning, a lookout spots a dark speck ahead. Land! What a thrilling sight! They have reached their new home. The ship gets closer. The pilgrims see a sandy beach and many trees. America looks wild and strange. Is it safe? Are Indians hiding in the forest? A search party goes ashore. The men walk along for miles and miles. Suddenly they see Indians, but the Indians are frightened and run away. The men keep exploring. They find wonderful things, corn, baskets, a spring. They take fresh water back to the ship. How sweet it tastes. Now the pilgrims must choose a good place to live, a place with a harbor and fresh water and fields for planting. At last, they find the perfect spot. Here, a brook flows into the harbor. A big rock marks the landing. They will call this place New Plymouth. The pilgrims begin a new life in a new land. There is so much to do. They must build houses before they can leave the ship. But it is winter. Bad weather slows them down. It takes weeks to finish just one house and there's hardly enough to eat. The pilgrims survive on food from the ship, roots, wild birds, and shellfish. How they wish for a dish of pudding and a slice of beef. On a nearby hill, the pilgrims make a platform for their cannons. They know the Indians are watching them. They can see smoke from their campfires. They can hear them in the woods. A guard is posted day and night. How hard that first winter is. Every day is bleak and cold. Fierce icy winds rip through the settlement. Freezing rain falls for hours. The pilgrims huddle together by their fires. They feel miserable and so alone. Almost everyone gets sick. Many people die. The small pilgrim band gets smaller and smaller. By the end of the winter, only half of the pilgrims are still alive. The pilgrims bury the dead at night in secret graves. The Indians must not know of how few pilgrims are left. 
and how weak those few are. The long, sad winter passes and spring arrives. Indians are sighted nearby. They come closer and closer. Then one day an Indian walks right into the settlement. The children are terrified, but the Indian smiles and says, welcome. His name is Samoset. He speaks English. He learned it from sea captains. The pilgrims ask Samoset many questions. They give him presents. They want to trust this friendly Indian. Samoset comes back with an Indian named Squanto. Squanto speaks even better English. He likes the pilgrims and decides to live with them. He shows them how to survive in the wilderness, how to hunt for deer, and where to find berries and herbs. He also shows them how to plant corn the Indian way. The Indians put fish in the ground when they plant their seed. The fish makes the soil richer. The pilgrims want to make friends with all their Indian neighbors. Squanto and Samoset tell them about an Indian king called Massasoit. He is a great and wise leader. Massasoit comes to visit Plymouth. The pilgrim governor bows and kisses the Indian king's hand. Massasoit bows and kisses the governor's hand. Then they talk together. A treaty is made. The pilgrims and the Indians will not harm each other. There will be peace. The Indian leader draws his sign. The governor writes his name. This treaty is kept for 54 years. In April, the Mayflower sails back to England. The pilgrims are sad to see it leave, but not one of them leaves with it. They all want to stay in America. The pilgrims work hard all summer. In the fall, the fields are full of good things to eat. It is the time of plenty for the pilgrims. How thankful they are. They have food and shelter and new friends, the Indians. The pilgrims decide to invite the Indians to a Thanksgiving feast. Massasoit promises to come. What a surprise. Massasoit arrives with 90 Indians. The pilgrims are worried. How can they feed so many people? But Massasoit knows what to do. He sends some men into the forest. They come back with five deer. Now there is enough for everyone. The oldest pilgrim says a prayer of thanks. Then the feast begins. Everyone eats so much. Turkey, lobster, goose, deer meat, onions, pumpkin, cornbread, berries. The feast lasts for three days. People eat and sleep, then eat again. The Indians do special dances. The pilgrim men run races. They have shooting matches. The children play games like tag and blind man's bluff. Everyone has a wonderful time. As the years go by, more people from England come to America. The little town of Plymouth gets bigger and bigger. The children of the pilgrims grow up and have children of their own, and they have harvest feasts too. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln, the President of the United States of America, makes Thanksgiving Day a national holiday. The first Thanksgiving is never forgotten.